Hey guys, I'm Jeremy with 2GP Actors and today I'll be showing you how to do a matte painting inside of After Effects. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is right click on my footage and create a new comp from this selection. I'm just going to rename it, the composition, stable, and then I'm going to select my footage layer and come over to the effects and presets tab and grab the warp stabilizer effect. Drag it onto my footage and I'm going to turn the smoothness down right away to 2. And the reason I'm just stabilizing this is kind of because when I shot it, I shot it without a rig of any type, so it's kind of shaky with just my hand, so I'm just stabilizing it, just 2% smoothness, just to get some of those little shakes out of the shot and make it easier to track and everything. Alright, now it's done stabilizing the footage, and I'm going to come back over to my project panel and I'm going to right click on that stable composition I just created and stabilized footage in and I'm going to create a new comp from that selection and then I'll just rename this main comp so this is the composition we'll be doing the majority of the work in so now that I have my footage in here the first thing I need to do is track it so that I can apply all the effects since this is a moving shot it's not on a tripod so I'm going to come over to my tracker tab and click on tra track camera and I'm going to come down in the advanced tab so just click this little drop down arrow and for the solve method I'm going to change the solve method to tripod pan the reason I'm doing this is just because when I shot this I shot it in one spot and I just moved the camera around I didn't walk around or anything so solve method would be tripod pan just use the best the best uh, solve method for your shot all right, now my shot is done being tracked, and you can see all these little X's have popped up everywhere. I'm going to turn target size down to about 30. So you can see that just makes the uh, little target that pops up right here. It makes it just a little bit smaller, so it's easier to see. So I'm going to right-click, and you see whenever you right-click, you get three options, create text and camera, create solid in camera and create null in camera. I'm going to create the solid in camera. So it basically just gives me blue solid and you can see if you scrub through your foot footage that it's tracked on there now. This point should work well. I'm just going to turn that solid off because the next thing we need to do is mask out this building so that we can place objects behind it. And so we can either do that frame by frame masking or we can rotoscope it or we can create a mat. Um, using our track data so I'm just going to do that show you all how to do that and so first thing I need to do is create a new solid make sure it's white so create a white solid and hit OK so that should be pretty good I'm just going to scale it up quite, quite a bit and the other thing is I'm going to make it a 3D layer and whenever you make it a 3D layer, it kind of repositions it. So just get it back to the position you want it in. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's pretty good. And then the next thing I'm going to do is parent this white solid that I created to my um, blue solid, the little blue square that was created um, from the 3D track. So I'm just going to parent the white solid to that blue solid. I'm going to rename some things. I'll rename the blue solid track data and the white solid mat just to stay organized. So now I'm going to turn off my mat and then I'm going to select the pen tool and with my mat layer still selected I'm going to mask out this building just pretty quickly since this is a matte painting tutorial and not a watch Jeremy mask out a building frame by frame tutorial. So I'll just do this really quickly, but it's definitely best if you take your time. It looks a whole lot better. And these trees are here. I'm just going to mask over them because sometimes it's better just to get rid of those little details because they're much harder to uh, try to keep them. It can be a lot of work. It's easier just to get rid of them. Alright, now I finished my mask and I'm going to turn the matte layer back on 
and you can see that there's just this perfect outline, not perfect, there's an outline of the building, and if I scrub through the footage, it just sticks on the building. Oh, and you see right down here in the corner, I just need to extend this mask like that. So just make sure you don't have um, any frames where your building or whatever you masked out is you know showing through in the corners or whatever so just make sure it's always covered by this white solid like right here just need to cover that up alright so I think I got mine covered through the whole time so now what we can do is start placing objects in our scene so I'm gonna come over to my project panel and take this picture of some clouds I got off Google um, I'm just gonna make this a 3d layer and reposition it a little bit that should be good enough and then I'm gonna take the clouds layer picture of the clouds and parent it to the track data so now it's, I have a 3d uh, layer the clouds picture and I just parented it to my track data. So the next thing we can do is get to where those clouds are behind our building. So I'm going to take the mat and drag it above the cloud layer. Next I'm going to do the toggle switches mode. Click that down here and you'll see that this track mat option pops up over here. So right now I have the mat layer above the cloud layer and I'm just going to take the track mat and switch it to alpha mat alpha mat um, there we go alpha inverted mat so now if we scrub through our footage you can see that the clouds are, are behind our building the whole time and we didn't have to do any frame by frame rotoscoping or anything like that I'm pretty sure you can also do luma inverted mat yeah so luma inverted mat or alpha inverted mat they both do the same thing and so um, I'm gonna take this mat layer hit M and then hit F and just feather that uh, mat mask that I made so because it's a little harsh and it's not a very good mask but it's best if you just feather the edges a little bit I'll probably go down a little bit too so I just feather the edges of the, that mask and then once we have that in there I'm gonna take this tree line I got off Google also and come down here toggle switches mode and make it a 3d layer I'm going to duplicate my mat layer and I'm going to drag it above the tree line and I'm going to set the the uh, track mat of the tree line to alpha inverted mat also so now the trees are also behind the building I was might be going pretty fast but I mean you can just pull it back but basically I'm doing the same thing that I did for the clouds so I made the tree line a 3d layer and I'm also going to parent the tree line to the track data so once you have your track data and you have your mat created where you've masked out the building it's pretty easy from then on to add your elements in such as clouds trees buildings skyscrapers whatever basically all I do is take the mat put it above your layer change the track mat to alpha inverted mat so change I change the track mat to alpha inverted mat of my clouds and then it's behind it and you're good to go so I just did that for the tree line and for the clouds so now the next thing I want to do is kind of color correct these to match the scene a little bit better and we gotta just reposition the uh, trees bring them down a little bit that looks a little a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna take these clouds and apply a curves adjustment. Let's brighten them up a little. Not a lot right now. And then I'm gonna take also the hue and saturation effect and drop it on there. And just drop the sat saturation down on the clouds some because our uh, our footage is pretty washed out so I'm just gonna match the clouds and the trees to my original shot then I'm gonna color grade it all 
then I'm going to go to my tree line and I'm going to drop the hue and satur saturation on there also and take the saturation down to about negative 30 we'll go about negative 26 that's pretty good and then I will also just throw a quick curves adjustment on the trees also brighten them up a little bit so I'm not going to go into tons of color correction and stuff but just a little few things um, one thing I want to do is take my cloud layer and this is good whenever you're doing um, anything that's kind of off in the distances I'm just going to blur out my clouds and my tree line both a little bit so I'll blur out my clouds about just we'll just do one on the Gaussian blur and then the tree line I'm gonna blur the whole thing and then I'm gonna blur the top part too you'll see what I'm talking about in a second so I'll blur the whole thing by about 0.5 we'll go a little lower just 0.3 and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tree line and I'm gonna pre comp it so go to the layer in your timeline right click pre compose and I'm gonna name this just tree line okay then I'm gonna come into this composition right here so you have this whole line of trees what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new solid and I'm gonna make it kind of a sky color to match the clouds in the other shot then I'm gonna take this rectangle tool and mask out just the upper portion of the trees okay now I'm gonna take the opacity of this solid and drop it down to about 30 I'm gonna hit M then F and feather it quite a bit it's pretty good I'll take down the opacity even more to about 10 okay that's pretty good bring it up to about 15 I like that better all right so now you can see if I go back into my main comp that there's this kind of blue haze towards the top of the trees and you, see, you can see that line right there but I'm going to fix that um, but that kind of just makes it look like the trees are off in the distance a little bit more this kind of that blue haze at the top of the tree line so I'm going to fix this just adjust it a little bit I'm going to make it a little bit smaller Then I'm going to also just blur it out too. We'll do that. Should help just blend it in some more. Alright. So it's kind of like that. Just a blue. You can see it's just blue haze all along the top of the trees. And that just kind of helps things make it look like it's off in the distance. You can do it with buildings, mountains, anything like that. Um. So I'm about done, but I'm just going to add a few more things. I'm going to add an adjustment layer to this tree line. And then I'm going to mask out the upper portion just like I did this guy. Then I'm going to apply the Gaussian blur to the, this adjustment layer. And I'm going to blur it out. It's about two. Let's try that. It's a little intense. We'll just do one. And then I'm going to take this adjustment layer and just push it up a little bit. So now you can kind of see it's just blurred out on the top. It's still a little intense. I'm just going to bring it down to 0.5. All right, that's good. So now we have this blur on the top and this blue haze just to kind of blend it in with the sky. So that's pretty good for me. And so now what I can do is take my whole main comp and create a new comp from my main comp and call this just final comp and what I'm going to do in this composition is add all those extra little effects you know color grade it and lens flare if I wanted to all that kind of stuff so I'm just going to do a quick gradish with um, some curves just real quick so add some contrast 
you can see my mask isn't amazing right there but y'all can take your time and um, really just get that mask to look pretty good so I'm just add some brightness and contrast bump up the reds a little this isn't so much of the tutorial I'm just kind of doing this to show you that you gotta make your main comp and put everything there and then I'm gonna take that main comp and put it in one more composition just so I can kinda of stay organized and basically in that final comp, comp you add all those extra little um, flares that you want to not little like literal lens flares but all your extra stuff you want to add to the shot so I'm just kind of playing around getting this how I want it to for the shot now it looks pretty good only thing I'm just gonna lower these brightness and contrast so that's pretty good but I mean you can do a lot more take your time do all the uh, stuff you want and one thing I'm gonna show you all how to do um, we've covered the color um, you know everything and putting trees everything behind that um, just a quick tip is how to create a vignette just inside After Effects really easily um, I'm gonna create a new solid and I'm gonna make it black then I'm gonna come up here to my shape tools and you can scroll through them when you click on them just click on it and hit Q you can scroll through them so I'm gonna scroll through to the circle then I'm gonna double click and it creates this ellipse on um, with, on the shape or on the solid and I'm gonna go to the mask options by hitting M and then change the mode to subtract hit F I'm going to feather it by about 200 and then take the opacity and turn it down to about 20 because I don't like a real intense vignette but just I'm going to scale it up a little bit too turn the opacity down a little bit more I don't like an intense vignette but just a little one I think kind of helps okay I think well playing around with the color a little bit more that should be good enough and then the last thing I'm going to do is add the aspect ratio bars you can add you know there's probably more specific ones but these are just 720 so I'm just going to right click transform fit the comp this may not be the thing they use in theaters or whatever but I was going through some and this is the one I thought worked best for my shot so basically this has been a tutorial on how to create a matte painting inside of After Effects. I didn't go over color a lot, I didn't really take my time on a lot, I just kind of showed you that that final comp is where I, and you can too if you want, but add those final touches. Um, but that's about it, it's pretty easy. So this has been Jeremy with that guy, or uh, TGP Extras, sorry. And you can subscribe, there should be an annotation somewhere around. Uh, thanks for watching, I'll have more tutorials coming soon, see you guys next time.